Ladies and gentlemen, be here for the live stream this evening at 6 p.m. Pacific on this channel. We will be talking about some very important things. This topic, this topic, the Alec Baldwin saga, where he is not giving his cell phone. The cell phone has not left his possession. There was a search warrant in New Mexico. There's going to be a search warrant now in New York. Two search warrants. The man has been arrested twice. So this is the morally superior, wonderful liberal Democrat telling us how we should live our lives. The Hollywood celebrity who has to give his condemnation and judgment and teach us how to live and how to act and how to be civil and explain to us how horrible Trump is. So, I mean, just on a, on a, on a side note that is infinitely more insignificant or, like, meaningless than actually ending someone's life, which is what Alec Baldwin did accidentally. But you have Bette Midler insulting and disparaging an entire state in West Virginia. And God bless the people of West Virginia. And it's like, these are the people that look down at half the country from their lofty perch, where they get away with almost everything. He had a search warrant for his phone, for the videos, the text messages, the emails, the pictures, the social media passwords, his Instagram, uh, uh, Twitter passwords, everything. His direct messages on Twitter, direct messages on Instagram, everything. New Mexico authorities obtained a search warrant from a judge because he's one of, perhaps, the suspects in a, a criminal investigation where almost certainly he'll get involuntary manslaughter charges when this is all said and done. The armor wasn't in the church. He did not abide by industry standards. And there was a protest of camera crew because of unsafe working conditions. But here you have Alec Baldwin, who the man his entire life, unfortunately, has led to this point, where you have a cinematographer... This woman lost her life because of his incompetence and his reckless behavior. You do not point a firearm at somebody ever unless you're defending your life. I have firearms. You might have firearms. What do we learn when we first, the first class, the inst first instructor that we meet never pointed anyone, always check the firearm immediately, immediately. And I mean... If you are at the range, you're loading the firearm yourself. And even when it's unloaded, you treat it as if it's loaded. And you never point at anything that you don't want destroyed. And you want to make sure you know what's behind what you're pointing. I mean, these are basic safety protocols. The industry standard in Hollywood on a film set is that you wait for the armorer to be there and you still check yourself, and you never point at anyone, okay? You never point at anyone. And so the man is completely disingenuous when he says, oh, um, I knew from my training not to pull the trigger of the firearm, but I only pulled the hammer back of the Colt 45, the single action. The USCCA, which I'm a part of, Oh, amazing organization. The USCCA has like 2.4 million views on one of their YouTube segments showing that he had to have aimed at the cinematographer. He, he had to. Okay? And he had to have pulled the trigger of the firearm. But if he didn't, my theory is that it was modified. And the producers, which he was one of the producers, a top producer you know, paid for the modification. But hit subscribe to this channel right now. Be here at 6 p.m. Pacific tonight for the live stream, ladies and gentlemen. And to my UK viewers, Australia, New Zealand, uh, everywhere around the world, it's 6 p.m. Pacific time. So that's 6 p.m. Pacific time, uh, West Coast of the United States. So, you know, if you could find out what time that is, 
your time. Be here. That'll be fantastic. At 6 p.m. Pacific time tonight, be here for the live stream. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to support my work long term, to all my Patreons, thank you so very much. You really help me do what I do, and it's just, I can't tell you that your support is so important. If you want to support my work long term, you want to, if you enjoy my channel, if you enjoy my, you know, wacky personality and my thoughts and how I evaluate politics and this topic and other topics, my Patreon is below if you want to support my work. I will have a segment on the Stock Market Crash channel below in the pinned comment right after this. So hit subscribe to the Stock Market Crash channel. That's below in the pinned comment. Ladies and gentlemen, the armorer and the assistant director gave their... The armorer and the assistant director gave their phones voluntarily. Okay. But I want to read you the Los Angeles Times. The sheriff's office does not have physical possession of the phone. Santa Fe Ca County Sheriff spokesman Juan Rios said Friday afternoon, the phone is in New York with Mr. Baldwin. Now, he might have just simply, obviously, you know, he, he, he could have simply, <laughs> it's the data, look, the service provider is going to give law enforcement all, everything he did on that phone. So he's not going to give, he's going to give a phone that's wiped clean, just like Madam Secretary, uh, or he might give it in bits and pieces after like bashing it with a hammer, which is what I think it's like customary for all Democrats to do that with their phones, even if they're not under investigation, which is rare for them not to be under investigation. But just like when they get it, it's like, you know, a rite of passage. They just, you know, hammer the phone. It's in bits and pieces. But... He's not going to give the phone with everything he had on that fateful day. So he probably is going to give a phone that's a completely new <laughs> a completely new phone. And so I I don't understand so okay, he they want the service provider to give all the data and the information on that phone that was downloaded or uploaded from that phone. And that's gonna that's gonna there's gonna be another search warrant. So they they're gonna have to get a court to give them a search warrant in New York because Alec Baldwin has pretty good attorneys apparently. And you know what? I I, I the one thing I'll say in his defense, which I don't even want to. There's nothing to say in his defense, but the one thing I will say is that it does make sense. Like I'm not. I understand why he wouldn't, I understand why anyone would demand a search warrant in New Mexico and a search warrant in New York. I understand why he won't immediately give his, uh, his phone. I understand the legal ramifications or why he would want to defend himself in that way. It does show that he has a lot to hide. Okay, now, if he didn't, look, if he didn't lie so much, it would be a tragic accident in which, you know, because he's a producer, he would de he'll definitely have to pay a great deal in terms of the civil cases. He has two civil trials, two civil cases, which will go to trial. And the family, the husband of the cinematographer is almost certainly going to take him to court. Okay, obviously. And, you know, they obtained an attorney that specializes in, in this, you know, horrible tragedy. And so I understand that. Like, he's going to... I don't understand why he kept opening his mouth and lying. I can't speak. I can't speak. I won't speak. I won't speak. I can't speak. She's from Madrid. I can't, if, you know, first he says he can't speak to paparazzi. Uh, in front of paparazzi, he said the sheriffs ordered him not to speak. So he's he wants to convey the notion that he cares so much about what law enforcement has demanded him to do, which is not speak to paparazzi. Then he blames the victim with George Papadopoulos and tells all a month later. Full of lies, he said he thought she had a heart attack. Then he said he thought that she had 
uh, I don't know, what did she say? What did he say? He, shot, he thought she fainted. That's impossible. They weren't wearing ear protection. And almost certainly, and if they were, then he was expecting something, but they weren't wearing any ear protection, almost certainly. He would have known that the firearm went off. He would have known because he had a bloodstained costume, according to police and court records. So if that's true, he has DNA on his on, on his shirt the FBI has, or law enforcement has. It was unfortunately a very intimate, gruesome, horrible, you know, terrible tragedy where there's no way he couldn't have known that he had ended her life. But he lied through his teeth. The man doesn't stop lying. And so it, it's, it would be different if, if he hadn't opened his mouth and been on Instagram with, you know, like, oh, look at us, look at us. Oh, you know, this is, fa-. you know, it's like you just ended someone's life. Take two months off of Instagram and social media and Twitter. And, but he is trying to get ahead of the narrative. And what he's doing, it, it actually has worked for his political side. They've tried to turn the page. But see, it's impossible to turn the page. Someone life, someone's life was lost. The cinematographer's life has been lost. Okay. A life has been lost. Imagine if Donald Trump or Eric Trump or or Dean Kane or John Voigt or any Trump supporter, any any conservative actor. Kanye West. Imagine if they had Donald Trump himself. Imagine if Donald Trump ended someone's life on a movie set. It would be a national, global obsession. And because it's Alec Baldwin, and he did an imitation of Trump, and he's like this hardcore liberal Democrat, nobody says anything. Or I should say, the reaction has been muted in the most embarrassing, disingenuous, disgusting manner. There's no there's no focus on this in national media. There was a couple of interviews where Alec Baldwin tried to, you know, carefully shape the media coverage. And at the end of the day, he put a greater spotlight on his absurd lies. But now there's going to be a second search warrant. So the man's been arrested twice, kicked off of an airplane getting into arguments with paparazzi almost went after a New York Post reporter if if Hilaria didn't hold him back he he would have gone to jail for assaulting a New York Post reporter so i got to give credit to his wife okay if his wife didn't hold him back he would have definitely almost certainly gone to jail cuz he was running he was running with that um <laughs> umbrella <laughs> If you look at the video, okay, the man is a hothead and he has a, a temper, like, you know, he has a, you know, serious temper issue, anger management issue. And he is everything that morally superior liberal Democrats in Hollywood think Trump is. Trump is not a bully. He really isn't. Trump responds he generally responds to people. Sometimes he goes overboard, but he generally responds. So people go after him and then he responds immediately. And sometimes that's not good, but he's a counterpuncher. He's not really, Alec Baldwin is always on social media for years, going after people, going after fans, going after paparazzi physically. It's like, so he's everything that, that, they, that they claim Trump is, but Trump never ended anyone's life. And if you want to say because of you-know-what, well, more people lost their lives because of you-know-what, and now look what's happening with you-know-what now under mashed potato brains. So, but Trump never ended anyone's life with a Colt 45 18 inches away without the armorer there, without checking the firearm. I mean, imagine. And now there's two search warrants, and it's pretty unbelievable. I mean, you look at, like, Democrats and, like, whether it's it's mashed potato brains' son with a laptop that they claim, oh, well, you know, it's like incriminating evidence, pay to play, and oh, well, you know what? Gee, I don't, it could be the Kremlin. 
Madam Secretary, top secret intelligence on servers outside of the U.S. government. Okay, she was almost certainly allowed to do so by President Obama, but you know what? That's still not legal. But anyway, you can't have top secret intelligence outside of the U.S. government. Okay, James Comey said it was an accident, didn't mean to do it. <clears throat> no intent, of, that's, that's the thing, oh yeah. Alec Baldwin, now he's going to go for a second search warrant. He'll probably move to another state and ask for a third search warrant. He'll go like state by state. He'll be 50 search warrants later. <laughs> He'll collect search warrants. <laughs> and so, but so the longer this plays out, the more questions like, okay, this is bizarre. This is very bizarre. I mean, it, it's just, it's too bizarre. It's too bizarre that, like, this would be, under different circumstances, the perfect crime. This would be a Columbo episode. I do my Columbo. Uh, I got a quick question to ask you. Why didn't you have the armor there? Like, it would be a Columbo episode. Because... Right now, it's just, I mean, I've been saying it's just an accident. Everyone has. But the longer this plays out, the more questions there are like, wait a second, this makes no sense. It makes no sense. I mean, if he's completely, completely, well, I mean, I, I can understand why his phone, why they don't, why he wouldn't give his phone, but at the same time, if he doesn't feel, if he states that he doesn't feel any guilt, and that he knows with 100% certainty someone's at fault, but it's not him. Make a copy of your phone so the police or law enforcement or the FBI can't, you know, add something or whatever. And give your phone and the data to police. You stated you have no guilt. What's, I mean, so what's the problem? You stated you have no guilt. And they're going to get your phone anyway. I mean, what Alec Baldwin's doing at the end of the day it doesn't, it doesn't serve him well. They're going to get his phone anyway. They're going to get all that data anyway. Everything, look, every password he has, every text message, every email, they will get. And it's just a matter of another search warrant. The data hasn't left the service provider. So it's not like you're going to, it's not like he's going to, you know, circumvent this. He's just going to prolong the, the process, which makes him, which, which is incriminating in and of itself. Again, if this were a conservative actor, one of the very few, every liberal YouTube pundit would obsess over this. Anyway, give me your thoughts below. Be here at 6 p.m. Pacific tonight for the live stream on this channel. Hit subscribe right now. I will have a segment on the Stock Market Crash channel right now. Hit subscribe there as well. Thank you so much. See you tonight at 6 p.m. for the live stream.